Hi everyone, welcome again to your new session of the AWS. In this session, I will explain you about Network Access Control List in AWS. So let's see the agenda of this session. I will give you a basic concept of NACL and something about VPC as well. After that, I will show you how we will create it NACL and why it is required for our VPC control and definitely I will tell you the types of NSCL and at the end I will explain about some of the use cases which we can use it in real life scenario so if you are new to this channel consider subscribing and pressing bell icon for more updates let's start with NSCL so first of all what is NSCL Network Access Control List that is ACL is an or NACL is an optional layer of security for our VPC that acts as a firewall for controlling traffic in and out of one or more subnets. We might set up network ACL with rules similar to our security groups in order to add an additional layer of security to our VPC. So, there are two types of NSCL. First is customized NSCL and second is default NSCL. So, as whenever you are creating AWS account, it's already having some default NSCL is already activated. So, when you go to services and select VPC, once you click on this, it will launch your VPC console system where when you click on the VPC dashboard you are able to see some of the services by default is running. So these all are related to your security mechanism by default activated for your system. But apart from that you will also create your customized NSCL which will help you to secure your data your repository and your account C4 side. So that is called as customized NSCL. Customized NSCL could also be understood as a user defined NSCL and its inherent characteristic is to deny any incoming and outgoing traffic until a rule is added to handle the traffic. Default NSCL, this is the opposite of customized NSCL which allows all the traffic to flow in and out of the network. It also comes with a specific rule which is associated with a rule number and it can be modified or deleted when the request does not match with our requirement or associated with the rule. The access to it is denied when a rule is added or removed. Changes are automatically applied to the subnets which are associated with it. So let's see how we'll create it. After that, I will give a basic concept of NACL. For creating NACL, we will need one VPC. Inside that only, we will create it. So select your VPC. Create one VPC here with your name, just like test VPC. Uh, you can provide any of the CIDR blocks, it's perfectly fine or keep all the data as it is and click on create. So let's see by default I am adding 0.0.0.24. get the VPC. Now you can see your VPC is created. So NSCL is basically working inside your VPC. So let's see where is our VPC. Let's minimize this. Now you can see this is our VPC. So select this. Once you select this, you are able to see all the details about your VPC is available here. 
means like the ip version 4 ci cd or ip version 6 then that tenancy it is default ip version 4 details and several other details are available as also just like your dscb option set root table network acl from here go to acl or network acl this so once you select this, it will ask for your selecting on which VPC you want to create it. Just like I want to create it, not in this, this one. So there are different rules are available like inbound rules, outbound rules. It's totally dependent on you how you want to create it. So if you want to create your network ACL, select it here. Uh, name or tag name so this is test NACL select this and click on create once you click on create your NACL is created according to our requirement you can make the changes whenever it is required for configuration purpose or any other detail which you can Added it at any point of time so that will save your system details and all the requirement according to your need which will justify your data or the presence of detail is safe so this is all how we can create it our uh, NACL and VPC so let me remove it from my repository because I don't want to use it further. So for deleting this once you select you just have to type here as a delete. Once you write delete and click on delete tab it will be deleted forever. Now go to your NACL settings. In the network NACL, uh, by default, it's available uh, for your action and the other things which we have deleted is automatically deleted from our account because it was integrated with our VPC account only. So when you click on your VPC dashboard, you are able to see only default content is available. Now you can see only default contents are available in network ACL. So let me check here. So this is by default content which we have created at the time of account creation of AWS. So if you are deleting your default uh, VPC, it will delete your account security purpose mechanism. So let me tell you about the main concept of the NACL or network ACL basics VPC automatically comes with a modifiable default network ACL by default it allows all inbound and outbound IP version 4 traffic and if applicable IP version 6 traffic also we can create a custom network ACL and associate it with a Subnet by default each custom network ACL denies all inbound and outbound traffic until we add our rules Each subnet in our VPC must be associated with a network ACL If we don't explicitly associate a subnet with a network ACL the subnet is automatically associated with the default network ACL We can associate network ACL with multiple subnets however subnet can be associated with only one network ACL at a time when we associate a network ACL with a subnet the previous association is removed so this is how the logic works or you can see the basic of NACL let's discuss some rules about ACL rules so we can add or remove the rules from the default network as we have discussed here or we have created and then we deleted according to our requirement. So whenever we are creating additional network ACL for our PC, when we add or remove rules from the network ACL, 
the changes are automatically applied to the subnets that is associated with that so the following contain which we have created just now is having rule number type protocol port range source destination and allow or deny this will also include if we add a rule using command line tool or the amazon ec2 api the cidr range is automatically modified to its canonical form just like 100.68.0.18/18 for the cidr range we create a rule with 100.68.0.0 or 18 cidr range so this is how we can create vpc and nsel inside our account and integrate with this so let's recap this we have started with the basic concept of nsel we have discussed about the vpc as well then we had discussed about types of nsel that is customized and default then i have created one vpc and nsel and integrated both of them finally whenever it is not required we can delete it according to our requirement so we have deleted as well from here then we have discussed about nsel basics and let me give you some use cases of nsel which will help you to justify this detail or justify the uses of nsel that is the main important part because of that i have segregated from at the end of the sessions so when a website needs to be accessed the request from the user has to hit the right port so just like if you are searching for flipkart.com or amazon.com and you have not assigned the right port so that assignment part is done by developer here so just like i am a user and developer has already assigned that port in a proper way then only when user will hit the url or domain name that if port is assigned properly that will hit the url and fetch the data according to the user request so just like they are searching for any products or any website name or data from the sites so it will hit search from the data collect the data from the database and send it to us so website has the access data and by extracting the appropriate data it has to give back a response to the user that is request show so vpc comes in built with the default nsel which applies to ip version 4 traffic a custom nsel can be created which can be associated with the subnet the customized nsel default behavior is to deny incoming and outgoing ip version 4 traffic it has to be specified rules so as to behave in a certain way when it receives a request there are multiple subnets can be bound with a single nsel but one subnet can be bound with a single nsel only at a time so this is the main real time use of the nsel and vpc or you can say the use cases so hope you liked it if you really enjoyed this video consider subscribing and pressing bell icon for more updates thank you for watching